So now from this sun salutation, we're going to move back down onto the floor and we're going to begin our yin portion. Now I'm just going to show you about uh, three uh, po uh, shapes here. We call them shapes in yin so as to not confuse them with, uh, with yoga. So our first shape here in yin is going to be the butterfly. Now here, as I mentioned, uh, in yin, you want access to a lot of props. And we're going to do with a butterfly. So let's bring the soles of our feet together and bring the heels in, your feet, as close as possible to what feels comfortable. Uh, but this is where you get to judge for yourself and a lot of adjustment, what's feeling right for you. So if close to your body works, great. If not, you can bring your feet up more into a diamond position. But this is a bit of a hip opener. And the props that you may wish to have are your, um, your blocks. And you can gently put them under your legs here, your knees, see how that feels. If that feels comfortable for you, you can get access to blankets. Oh, and Alice is joining us. Hi, Alice. Okay, I'll leave that blanket for you. Okay. And in yin, we hold poses for three to five minutes. So it's a passive type of yoga, but no less challenging. So when you're feeling ready and you've adjusted, you've propped yourself up to what's needed for you, we will begin our three minutes. So keeping the back straight, the neck in line with the back, and gently folding forward in this butterfly. Going through that process of uh, self-inquiry and how is that shape um, settling into our bodies. Hi sweetie, this is Alice and she likes to join me for yoga. She loves her blanket. And she'll try and, I'll just move her over here. Come on, sweetie. So going through that process of self-inquiry and how that's feeling in our body, definitely a bit of a hip opener. And throughout the uh, three minutes, you may find that you need to adjust slightly. If you have a bolster, this is where you might want to keep, take your bolster and put your forehead on your bolster to help hold that position. Now to help you as well, I'm going to go on the side so you can see how this looks from the side. Long, slow inhales, filling that breath going to every part of your body, all the muscles and bones, fascia, the blood, and a long, slow, deep exhale. Again, we're just a little over the halfway point. Let's reassess how that's feeling within your body. Are there any more slight adjustments that you need to do to keep you and sustain you for the next minute?
So I'm actually putting this video together for you today, September 4th. So a little over a week from your, uh, your walk, your special day. And my hope and desire for you is that you get the same beautiful weather that we're getting today. That would be just amazing for your walk, for your gift of hope. So coming out of I shape and yin, we do so very, very gently. And we take our props away, we remove our props, and in between every shape and yin, we come to a resting position, typically a savasana, but that can be a savasana on the belly or the back. We're going to go into a mini savasana on our back, but gently bring your knees up and we're going to lower down. So I just wanted to mention my mistake. Um, if you could uh, tell me the time, because <laughs> in terms of, uh, I don't know if I did three minutes or more than three minutes, that's definitely my mistake. Um, so I'm just doing three minutes for their, um, for their pose, oh, their shape. It was about, yeah, about three. It was, eh? Yeah. Three, three and a half. Okay, They're perfect. And so then, um, I just want to make sure I've got that. Okay. So um, then what I'd like to do is just around the halfway point. Okay, so I'm going to go into a mini Svasana for about 20 to 25 seconds. Okay. And then I'm, that's when I'm going to start the next shape. Gotcha. Okay. And I should cue you. Give me about 10 seconds to talk about the, sh the shape and the, uh, the props. Okay. And, uh, and then... Count the like the minute and a half and the minute and a half after okay. that. Okay, sure, okay. sure with that. Okay, so now let's go down into our mini savasana after that first shape. So in savasana, the idea here is we bring our palms up, allow the feet to splay out to each side, tuck the shoulders under, and we're going to just rest here for a few seconds allowing that first yin shape to settle into our body, into our joints, into our muscles. Now some may think in yin that, you know, they might look at the shapes and go, oh, that's, you're not really working, you're not really challenging yourself. Um, you know, what are you doing? Well, I invite you to actually either on the internet um, find a yin session for 45 minutes to an hour or uh, join online or I do believe some yoga studios are opening up if you feel comfortable you can uh, sign up for one of those yin classes you might be surprised the next day the work that your body is feeling that it's done and it's accomplished. So for our next shape, we're going to do what's called happy baby. Now again, you may have heard this term uh, before, and it's just a wonderful hip opener, very relaxing, on the back, uh, nice gentle um, pressure points on the back that will be, uh, I guess, um, invigorating and engaging. So with our hobby baby, we want to raise our legs and then bend the knees and then come up through the inside of our legs and gently grab the outside of our feet. Bring our knees down towards us and holding that gently. Now here for props, what you may find that you need is something under your lower back. If so, please use one of your towels. Again, this is um, where you need to kind of just think about your body, uh, what's happening, what's, what's going on right now, how's it speaking to you, and then do what's necessary. And then we're going to hold this for three minutes. And I'll let you know generally around the halfway mark if you need to make any other adjustments. Ah. 
Hugging the long, slow, deep breaths. Feeling that beautiful energy and oxygen going to every part of your body. What a beautiful time that you've taken out for yourself today. Beautiful gift to introduce yourself to yoga, the possibilities. The compassion that you've shown towards yourself and others today. You're to be commended and congratulated the love. So we're probably just a little over a minute and a half here, halfway through. So again, make any adjustments that you may uh, feel are necessary. And you can even, if, if uh, that full happy baby was too much, you can do a half happy baby. So allow your leg to come down. Does that feel okay for you? If not, bring the sole of the foot down. And this is your half happy baby. And hold for a few seconds here on this side. Still breathing though. When I say hold, I mean hold the pose or the shape, not your breath. We never hold our breath in yoga. Breath is the most important uh, aspect keeping that energy flowing and alive throughout our body and our mind, our spirit. So if you did opt to do half happy baby, I invite you now to do half, half happy baby on the other side. And now gently unwinding from our happy baby, gently bringing the legs down to our mini savasana in between our final yin shape. Arms out to the side and don't be afraid to take up the space that you need. It's not necessary that your hands are close to your body. That actually may feel a little awkward Bring them out a little. If you need to go out a little bit further, by all means. As long as you're not invading on anybody else's space. But I think nowadays, there's going to be lots of space in between us. Tuck the shoulders under again. And breathing deeply. And I know you really want to probably stay here in this Savasana. We're getting there. We have one more shape to do. And then I'll give you your nice longer Savasana. So getting into our next shape and coming out of this mini savasana, again, we want to bend our knees and slowly move over into fetal position. I wouldn't recommend a rocking up, not in the end. Ah, and we're going to come onto our bellies. And we're going to go into a shape that's called Sphinx. Now to do Sphinx, we're on our bellies. 
and we're going to gently rise up with our elbows beneath our shoulders, palms flat on the mat, shoulders back and down, neck is in line with the back, and we're gently, um, we're, we're focusing forward on a bit of an angle. So we don't want any acute angle in our neck down or up. We don't want that acute uh, angle there. We want a nice, gentle, probably, I guess, 45 degree angle, a little forward and down. And we're going to hold this now for three minutes. And assess how things are feeling with you here. You may want blankets along your legs and take the time to adjust and set yourself up. You may need a blanket in front of you to help support holding you up. Anything is possible here in yoga. Again, if you have a bolster or a block, if you feel you need support for your neck or head, you can hold your uh, forehead on a um, on a block bolster or my uh, make do gardening tool which works just fine as long as the uh, angle of your neck is not acute that sharp uh, 90 degrees up or, or down and feel how that is feeling in your body that, that slight back bend, very invigorating. I'm necessary. We're not doing these back bends as often nowadays. We're leaning forwards a lot, shoulders, you know, hunched forward as opposed to back and down, shoulder blades down. Computers have, uh, are great, especially during this pandemic technology. We've, uh, if you hadn't embraced it before, this has helped. It's certainly really great. It's a useful, useful tool in keeping us in touch with our loved ones. But the downside is if we're in front of that computer too much, or our phone or our tablet, our neck and our shoulders and back are hunched forward. So this nice opposite uh, shape is really good for us. So we're about halfway through here. Again, how is that feeling in your body? Take the time to adjust. Carry us through that next minute and a half. I was about to say hour and a half, I won't do that to you. And are you still breathing? Those nice, long, slow, deep breaths. So we'll spend just a couple more seconds here in Sphinx. And I just wanted to quickly show you um, in Yin from Sphinx, where the pose you can get into or shape you can get into is seal, where you would bring your palms out to the corners of the mat and rise up a little bit more, straightening your arms to a point that feels comfortable for you. Shoulders back and shoulder blades down, and a bit deeper of a back bend. I just wanted to show you that. We're not getting into this shape today, but I invite you to, to try that sometime. And now we're going to go into Savasana, which is our final pose. And we've done a few mini savasanas, but this is going to be your nice, luscious, longer one. So again, it's lying on your back, palms up, taking up the space that you need, tucking the shoulders under. Uh, the feet splayed out to either side. And depending on how that's feeling on your lower back, you can always rise up and move your tailbone down a bit. Uh, and then we stay here for a few minutes. This pose is so important. It's allowing your body, everything too, that you've just done, 
to fall into the body. Settle in. And a few moments of calm and peace and breathing. So I invite you to stay here for a couple of minutes and I have a reading for you. Maintaining that long, slow, deep breathing. The reading is entitled Sustaining Wonder, and it's from the book, uh, The Book of Awakening. In one atom are found all the elements of the earth. In one motion of the mind are found all the motions of existence. In one drop of water are found all the secrets of the endless oceans. In one aspect of you are found all the aspects. As humans, we are relentlessly in cycle. The mind builds a shell to protect its turtle spirit, but the shell muffles the spirit till outgrowing the shell, we devise ways to break it. We build the shell, then tear it down. We build it thinner, we tear it down. Yet only between constructions are we thoroughly touched. Only between encasements are we punctured by love but we are not to be blamed. All of nature is conscripted to such a cycle. Trees grow moss, silver tarnishes. The mind is dulled by the growth of its conceptions. And likewise, a storm removes the moss. A scratch breaks through the tarnish and crisis reveals the raw surface of the mind. Time builds and erodes and we are transformed, yet the same. Wind gathers sand to a dune and tide undermines the dune. It's how the early years pack us and the later ones softly flood us without a sound. We have no choice but to withstand the film that constantly builds and to endure the erosion that inevitably follows. Of course, for humans, this dance of film and erosion is not merely physical. It affects our thinking, feeling, seeing and being how easily and repeatedly we dull and brighten, how easily we become chronic amnesiacs of spirit, drifting into observation and analysis when we stop participating and experiencing. Then we wake one day forgetting the feel of life, which incredibly attuned to its silhouette. We can see it so clearly, each perplexity and nuance, yet why can't we feel it? In this way, the mind grows thoughts and words the way the planet grows trees, so much that we no longer see the heavens, and so we need to chop down what we think and say, and yes, silence is an axe. In truth, our liveness depends on our ability to sustain wonder, to lengthen the movements we are truly uncovered, to be still and quiet till all the elements of the earth and all the secrets of the oceans stir the aspects of life waiting within us. Now gently coming out of Savasana, what we try to do is awaken the body a little bit. 